Hello, hello, everybody. I hope you trying to make sure that my technology is working. If you can hear me, let me know. Hello, Sunday, Super Sunny D, Farmer Bradley Powell, Rick Martin. Um, glad to have you guys. Hi, David, Ty Ross. Um, Dr. Lee's going to be a little late uh, joining us today, and I'm having a little bit of a technology um, problem with my computer, so you may see me looking over there a lot. So um, try to bear with me, and we will certainly um, make this a wonderful live today. Um, a couple things that um, I'm going to go over before Dr. Lee gets here is, you know, we want to recap on the 30-day challenge. Um, we've received a lot of comments that people are behind, they're feeling overwhelmed, um, Remember, this is a lot of information that is coming at you at one time. Um, this is stuff, you know, directly from the 90 day program. Um, so remember progress, not perfection. Um, stay engaged and, and you will evolve uh, if you are, are you know, it, you engaging in this program, you're already winning. So just keep that in mind um, every day that you're 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 able to not, you know, um, engage in porn or uh, PMO, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a win and, you know, just, just keep your head up. Um, if you want to receive daily emails um, to kind of help simplify it, um, it gives you some direct questions at the bottom to kind of help you. Um, go to can you Dr. Me? Oh, here she Hey, comes. can you see me? <laughs> Hey, what's happening? Hi. We are just Happy getting Friday. started. Okay, Happy great. Friday. Cool. I know. Um, Thank God. <laughs> hey, everybody. What's going on? Is what real? Oh, are we here live? Rah <laughs> Rahul Barla? Yes, this is real. Uh, this is, in fact, very real. I was just talking about the 30 day challenge and, you know, letting them know that this is a lot of information coming at them that, you know, that they are already winning being in this process. And, um, you know, if, if anybody does want daily emails, um, I've put the link below. Uh, you can double click on that link and it will bring you to the uh, Brain Reboot Rewire programs. And if you go to the very bottom, you'll download the blueprint and that will add your name to the email list and you will receive daily emails um, with regards to the 30 day challenge. Um, so that's as far as we've got. We uh, okay, cool. was going to talk about the 30 day. We have a um, an amazing program coming out in December. This is going to springboard off of the 30 day challenge to, you know, keep you engaged and, and to, um, you know, help you be able to deal with the holidays. Um, this program will be coming out uh, December 1st through January 2nd, and um, it's called Enjoy the Holidays Without Porn. It's going to be a deep dive, um, thinking logically about how to get through the holidays. It's already hard, right? Having to go to parties, more commitments, uh, getting with in-laws. It can be very stressful. So, you know, this is um, a guide on how to enjoy those times, how to deal with stress that comes with it. Um, we will have you plan holiday, holiday events uh, with ease and, you know, not getting overwhelmed. Um, if you have a partner or not, it doesn't matter. We want to help you and, um, yeah, to be ready happens. for the new year, new you, new brain. Um, mm, cool. it, you want to talk a little more about that and then I can tell them. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I was, I'm very excited because, you know, here on YouTube, we're doing our 30 day challenge, which is daily action steps. And I know, and maybe you already talked about this, but you know, I've talked with people and seen comments saying like, I'm behind because this is a lot of you know, it's a lot of work, all these action steps, and it's designed so that, you know, you keep moving forward. And Jamie probably said it, we have a little tagline, you know, if you stay engaged, you evolve. So that's why, you know, we joke that everyone's a winner in this challenge. And I just made a couple of videos that come out over the weekend. And, uh, you know, I see in some of the comments, you know, is anybody actually reco recovered here? You know, this is hard. That That's what I say in one of the videos. Like this is a 30 day challenge, not a 30 day walk in the park, you know? So 
it is challenging and having all those action steps you can go back to. So, you know, and you engage with them as you can moving through the 30 days. But a lot of people have reached out and say, what do I do after these 30 days? Like if I can get 30 days, then what? So even though it's a busy time of year, and honestly, I kind of wanted to kick back in December being the mom of five kids that I need to make. I always usually make an amazing holiday season happen, which I still will make um, happen. But I'm like, you know, I could use December where I chill. But instead of chilling, I'm putting together, right? Uh, instead of chilling, I'm putting together a, you know, get not, I, I was going to say get through the holidays without porn, because originally that's what I had it entitled in my mind. But I changed it to enjoy the holidays without porn because enjoy is an intentional word. And, you know, if you get sucked into going back into the screen, literally on a neurochemical level, there is less enjoyment in the world. So when you're at a family holiday party, your brain's going, I need out of here. I need back into the screen because there's just cortisol here and no dopamine. That'll shift for you over this 30 day challenge, whether you have some relapses, obviously you can't relapse for 30 days, but if you've had some relapses, your brain is still unwiring. And so in this holiday season, I don't want it to go backwards. So that's what the, that's what the program is. And the way we've designed it, it's 33 days and it's going to be a dollar a day. So it's $33 to join it, but it's not on YouTube. It's going to be in our course platform. So uh, I think we're going to have it out next week for pre-order so that we know how many people are basically going to be in it. But then there'll be daily lessons and encouragement, but it's going to be different. It's going to springboard off of it. Did you have anything I, else to add about that? When I, look I at did actually go ahead and uh, create the link. So if people oh, okay. are interested in, you know, go ahead and, and pre-ordering it, there is a link below um, where you can directly go ahead and purchase it. Uh, it absolutely it won't be open until December 1st, but you can go ahead and, and pre-order it um, because it will not be a dollar a day after December 1st. So if you get in now, um, you know, there are limited seats to, um, you know, have it uh, at a dollar a day for, for $33. So uh, get in while you can. Yeah, cool. Okay. So I'm just looking at some comments. Uh, hello to affairs now in South Africa, joining us from South Africa. Always cool. Um, I know Jamie has some questions, uh, but just give some people some shout outs. Uh, Taffy's looking to say hi to Jamie. Ty Ross in the house. Hey, Farmer Bradley. Uh, withdrawal symptoms. Tax Dar Wade wants to know. We'll touch upon some withdrawal because I'm sure some of you are experiencing that. Um, well, I know I saw it go by. What is a relapse? Um, I'll find the person's name, but you know what's considered a relapse. You know, if you have a slip, that's kind of a one-time event where you know you find yourself back in the screen. A relapse is. You find yourself back in the screen and then you find yourself back in the screen again. You find yourself back in the screen again and your brain will fight for that neurochemically. It will try to keep pulling you in. We're skill building over this month. We're developing fortitude. I wanted to share this for a minute and then we can jump into some questions. But this month is about increasing self-awareness. So if you do have relapses, learn from them, become much more self-aware than you were at the beginning of this 30 day challenge. That alone will be a blessing for you. And then if you, you know, if you do have relapses, dissect them a little bit and, and figure them out. Uh, Star Tech Gamer, 730 days to require to fully recover two years. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that is an average where we, t we say that it, after 90 days, you're well on your way, but yes, that it can take up to two years. Um, okay, Jim, do you have any other thoughts for me before we... I did want to start off with, uh, you know, people ask, do people recover? I have a uh, success story that I just wanted to share really mm -hmm. quickly um, that I think will, you know, uh, be helpful. So, uh, hello, Dr. Trish Lee. It's been a while since I've... Um, Make sure you share it anonymously to make sure. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Just remember um, that part because I promised this person it would be anonymous. It's a it's a viewer from our channel, correct? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and and it's something that he actually put on on YouTube. So. Um, oh, okay. Cool. cool. And watched your. I, I've I have commented and watched your videos. Great as always. I wanted to share my success story for others to see. I would also mm -hmm. like to thank you. Your videos really skyrocketed to current curing my addiction. It really has been a while since I have peeked at those dirty, dirty websites. <laughs> 
I have returned to praying regularly and working out, shredding the guitar and studying hard. Every day is now full of purpose because I found my significant other and I have the urge slash need to, I guess it's supposed to be, I don't have the urge um, or need to screen every day anymore. I feel like I was reborn and living life truly and maxing out every day like it is the last day on earth thank you from the bottom of my heart doctor you are a blessing for this over sexualized world god's grace wow thank you i know that's really really beautiful thank you for sharing that um yeah this is important stuff and what i i read that that was an email came through with that too and i read it and uh you know i people without partners because i know there's some questions here today is that, you know, when you go back into the screen all the time, it really impacts your ability to attract a partner, think that you deserve a partner, find a, uh, I commented to someone last night, I was chilling on my back porch. It was such a nice night. It was such a gorgeous night here in North Carolina. And I love these moments. And if you have a big family or if you can relate to this, what happened last night was my kids didn't have school yesterday for Veterans Day. So like all these kids and all these people ended up at my house, which was really fun. So I wanted to be around them, but it's not in my nature to sit around doing nothing at length. So I was doing comments on the back porch while, you know, kids ran in and out. It was very cool. Um, but, you know, about finding a partner and I, I wrote, you know, I say to find the perfect partner for you. And, you know, of course, it's not the perfect person. It is that when your energy on a neurological level cleans up, you attract a person who you can be happy with. And th that's the case for everybody. And you can have that and you deserve to have that. But if you keep going back into the screen, you make your energy. So it repels attraction. It really does. And, you know, I've talked about books that support that idea before. So you know, I really love that, that in that email, he's, you know, found his honey and is now so fired up about hobbies and work and working out and being with another person in a connected way is a really cool thing. Real. Uh, Tebs, uh, I see a comment by Tebs. I assume the 30 day began on the first. It did. But the beautiful thing is there's a playlist. So you can just start right now and you can do your own 30 days or you can do the first uh, 12 of them and catch up. So it's it's up to you. Um, okay. What do you got? So, James? I've got uh, Rick Martin. I told him I would answer his question. Can you talk about the turning pro and how it relates to porn addiction? Yeah. And I have a video coming out that is to, um, turn pro to quit porn. It's coming out someday soon. I just recorded it yesterday. And um, if you've read that book, I devoured it last weekend, which was really fun. It's a, it's a short book. And like I told you last week, last time I read it, I, read it page by page and like let each page sink in for a while. And I still think that's a the perfect way to read it, a great way to read it. But as I started reading, I'm like, oh my gosh, this book is better for this purpose than I even remember. So I just like went through all the pages and read the whole book in one sitting. And the concept that Stephen Pressfield says is that for most of us, especially people that are wrapped up in an addiction, and he talks about his own stories and other people's stories, is that we're living an amateur version of our life and so even in people who have good careers, he calls them shadow careers. And that when you turn pro, you basically have a rock bottom moment. And he talks about his rock bottom moment. And it doesn't have to be devastating. It's just the moment when you go, dang, I am not doing this for one more day. I deserve better. I want more. I have it in me to go out there and be on purpose. And he talks about purpose and, you know, moving moving yourself out of that amateur mentality into the pro mentality. And that's what I talk about in all my videos about getting on purpose and figuring that out. I was looking around to see if mine is here in the video that I made. I read the page from the book, which is page 38. If you have the book on being addicted to sex and what he talks about, like saying, what is the point? What's the purpose when we're addicted to sex? What are we trying to do? And in there, I'll let you read the page. And I read um, pieces of it in the video I made. You know, in there, he talks about being able to join with yourself, your authentic self, your real self that's in there. And that's what I always 
talk about. So I, I was super excited about being able to go through that book. I highly recommend it. I won't, I won't go on more about it, but it's the transformation that we're talking about here. This is a transformational journey. So every person in this challenge is on a transformational journey. How amazing is that? The rest of the world is not, you know, people who aren't trying to make themselves better. So the, the, the deal with the transformational journey is you love yourself where you are. And, you know, we talked about this and actually I want to talk about forgiveness today. You forgive yourself for the things you've done in the past and you are okay with where you are at this beginning point, but you're excited to see what your potential holds and you get really quiet and you look inside and you're like, this is the thing I've always wanted to do. And then you have the courage to go do that. And it's amazing when you get up each day and you do those things. So like when you try hobbies that you're excited about, like my son was just telling me my kids are home again today. So if you hear some outrageously loud music sometime soon, it's because my son's taking a 45 minute shower. Um, <laughs> right? Classic 17. But he was saying this morning, he wants to take sparring lessons. I'm like, go for it, dude. He's like, I want to learn like Taekwondo or karate. I just want to get into sparring. I actually, I don't even totally know what he was saying, like three moves or something. And I'm like, let's do it. Find a lesson. Because if that showed up in his heart and his mind today, I want to encourage him to follow that because then that leads him towards his authentic self. And so that's a really cool, a really cool thing. Uh, okay. So what else? So David, thank you for your um, donation. We really do appreciate it. I cannot see your question in the chat. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. Um, why it's not pulling up, but um, oh, I see it. He can... says, both of you ladies are doing superb work. I probably can show it, right? Only 49 days left to New Year's Eve. This is a journey and it's worth it. Yep. Oh, there's a different one below this. Yeah. Chat. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so maybe I can find it. Um, but maybe there is med another medical or psychological literature. Maybe that's it. Uh, I don't know. Put it back James, in sorry. if you don't mind. Um, so I have another question um, about does Dr. Trish offer one on ones? Um, she does. And if you go to um, the link below, um, Porn Brain Reboot, um, there is a uh, home neurofeedback where you can have uh, one one on one meeting with her uh, once a month. Um, and if you are in the 90 day program, you do get to um, have a meeting with Dr. Lee. Um, also, if you add groups, you get to meet with her twice a month. So live one on one meetings, um, accountability partners. Um, it's really a, a, an amazing group. Um, but so um, Star Tech Gamer says, does anyone recover here? Yeah. And so, uh, and hopefully people will put in where they're at in their journey. And I mean, in the videos, but I've been pressed for time. That's what I joked with John, who's on our team that I really don't live a lifestyle where I can make daily videos. <laughs> like, you know, it's really just hard for me, but I love doing it. So I'm here for it. Um, but I keep meaning to in the videos, to, you know, prompting people to drop specific things that we're working on in the comments and people are doing it anyways, which is a wonderful thing. But um, I'd love to know if people are being successful and, you know, people are putting that in the comments and, you know, that, that testimony, that email that we got, yeah, people recover here. That is the, the goal, but I'll tell you, a lot of people need more support and that's why we have programs and we're constantly trying to, Jamie and I talked about making it's hard for me to be available for everybody all the time. It just is. So we're trying to find more affordable, you know, we have all different levels, affordable ways for people to get the help that they want. And, uh, you know, so this is people recover here just in YouTube. They are, we get emails every day. We get an email, which is the coolest thing. And then, you know, people reach out, they're like, I'm trying with your YouTube channel and it's not enough. And, you know, we're trying to organize the 30 day challenge is now an organized playlist for people. So you can come back to it. You know, people say, can you organize the content? And I'm like, no, not really, because <laughs> I just don't have the energy or the ability. But what I can do is start making more organized content on our way moving forward. And that, you know, that's our plan and that's what we're doing. But, you know, if you need more help, the programs are there for you. So here's another comment from Elf. Does healthy sexual relationships use the same neuropathway as PMO? If someone goes through the three years detox period and then start having healthy sex, will it reactivate um, turned off PMO neuropath? 
No, it doesn't. And so what we know from the neuroscience is that you actually build a new pathway for healthy sexuality. So the way I talk about it, but this is true. The way I talk about it in terms of neural pathways is you need to build a new neural pathway for healthy sexuality, and you need to build new neural pathways for healthy mood regulation. And actually that one I think is probably the more important of the two, because if you can get healthy mood regulation going, then you can then work on getting healthy sexuality going. So then what happens is when you build those two neural pathways and they're flowing and firing the old neural pathway for hypersexuality, which is the link between mood regulation and sex, that pathway, unfortunately, doesn't go away. That's what we know. That's the Delta Fos B transcription fact factor that acts like concrete on that pathway. But if you don't fire it up, it dies off. So if it's not being traversed or walked over, then it's not being used. But that's why, you know, going back to the question, does anybody recover? What recovery is, is just constantly using those new neural pathways to take the edge off of stress, to cure boredom, and to have healthy sex with a partner and make sure you don't use the old one. And if you're triggered to use the old one, you run, not walk, to using these other pathways. You stop using them. That's why I made a couple of videos on how to stop fantasizing. Because every time you have a fantasy thought, you're, you know, you're kind of firing up that old neural pathway and you're at risk of going down the slippery slope of a relapse. That's how relapses occur. But to answer the question, nope, they're different neural pathways. Stop using the old one, start creating new ones. So here's a uh, TikTok hub. Who are you, Jamie? Tell me about yourself. <laughs> so, um, and I'm also going to answer your question about, um, or Dr. Lee will answer your question. What is monk mode, Doc? Uh, best way to postpone FAP. Um, so I am um, Jamie Watson. I am, um, I've joined Dr. Lee uh, in April and um, I've had a history or been in uh, the recovery field for uh, quite a number of years. Um, and um, it, it was mostly um, drug addiction and then um, having family history of it. And, you know, um, you, you really get familiar. And, and so um, it's been a journey and I absolutely uh, love to be a support person, an advocate. Um, I really try to encourage, you know, any of our, um, I'm, I'm the one who does the, the behind the scenes emails and, and things and she like that. She answers the so, phone. Don't call, don't ever oh, yes. call her, but <laughs> yeah. I do answer the phone and, um, try to help Dr. Lee with, with anything that if, if I can help her do her job better, she is able to help more people. So that is uh, my goal. Yeah. And, and I was I so excited to uh, not if I not to cut you off. I'm sorry. But what I wanted to say is I was so excited to find Jamie because I not to abuse the word vibe that I've been known to abuse. When I met Jamie, I just knew it was going to be a good it's not, you know, her title is my executive assistant, but I think it's so much more than that. And you can comment on it. You know, like we work together I think, right? We really work together really well. And I would not be able to do the things that we do together here without her. So it's really oh, cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I I love my job. It yeah. is definitely something that I do not. Um, I get up and I'm ready for work. It is something I totally enjoy doing. So it is an amazing experience and um, don't plan on mm -hmm. going anywhere. Anytime soon, <laughs> anytime soon. So. That's right. So his question was, what is monk mode and best way to postpone FAP? Yeah. So monk mode is like the, the uh, most intense version of not engaging in pornography consumption, not masturbating, saying, staying away from all things sexual, like a monk. And it can be powerful for many people. I made a video and I know people are like, that video is confusing, but you know, it's confusing because it's two sides of the coin is what I'm trying to present because this thing is complex. It's there's not a one size fits all solution. And, but what I, the way I talk about it is, is like, um, you know, actually I see just to, to add to someone else's comment, it's Casper says, you know, I'm, I'm triggered everywhere and even PDA makes me depressed. So when you really get out of, of not even allowing yourself to look at anything sexual, you see PDA, you walk away and you don't allow yourself to linger in that depression. 
you don't go anywhere where there is slightly erotic images. You stay off of the, you stay out of the World Wide web. You know, you stay out of electronics so that your brain can totally unwire that pattern. Monk modes the just unwire as fast as possible. And that's difficult, but that's a, an effective way. And especially if you have a partner, it means you don't have sex with your partner either. It means you are just, you know, you're a monk. And then, you know, if people have partners, they might want to try to develop healthy sexuality while they're leaving unhealthy sexuality behind. That can get tricky for people. So a lot of people make the decision not to have sex at all for 90 days to just let their brain unwire. So Sean says, um, what do you consider to be authentic self and how does someone find their authentic self? And thank you for the donation, Sean. We, we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and this is a great question, too, is that, you know, the way that I talk about it, and this is based on a lot of literature and a lot of um, people who are mental health professionals, psychotherapists who have books uh, and actually metaphysical stuff, too. But um you know, your authentic self is the version of yourself that you were born. And when you were young, before you were programmed to act in a certain way. And, you know, I think a takeaway, we talked about this last week, but a takeaway for today, again, because you know how I like some action steps, is to evaluate some of your programming. And in last week, I gave a couple examples, so I won't go there again, but you can watch the, the recording. It's on, on the channel. But, you know, we're programmed into liking certain things. We're programmed into acting certain ways. But thinking about like when you were young, before you found PMO especially, and if you have any traumatic experiences, or we know that there's family dysfunction everywhere, every family has it. So when you're in a family, what happens is you develop a persona so that you can feel safe in the world. Those are the nine personality types. So figuring out like what you actually care about inside of yourself and having the courage to do that thing and be that thing. And Stephen Pressfield talks about it in Turning Pro. And in there, in the book, he says, what I've said lots of times is that turning pro doesn't mean you're like a pro athlete or anything. It means if you want to be a stay at home dad, you have the courage to go. Yeah, I know the world doesn't stay at home. Most for the most part is dads, but I'm doing it. And I know a couple super cool stay at home dads. And it's amazing that they were able to make that choice for themselves and they love it. Actually, one of my husband's friends is um, he's making a ton of money. I forget who he works for, but he's making a ton of money. And he told them that he can only work till 2.30 or something because he's going to coach his kids games. And they, he thought they were going to fire him and they ended up, they valued him so much that they're letting him like, you know, work on a flexible schedule. But he had the courage to say, I care more about my being able to coach my kids games than I do keeping this job that gives me all of this money. How cool is that? He loved his job too. So it wasn't an easy decision, but you know, he looked in his heart and he went, I want to be a coach. And so like, and even for me, I've looked in my heart and I go, when my kids were little, I threw my oldest daughter. It's like a running joke in my family. I threw my oldest daughter a birthday party and I immediately learned I do not like kid birthday parties. <laughs> <laughs> and so for 18 years, we don't have kid birthday parties. And my kids are always like, can I have a party? I'm like, hell no, I cannot do that to myself. And actually my daughter, two of my kids' birthdays on October 5th, they had like friends over. So now the thing we do is like, they'll have friends over, but you know, there's no gifts and and we actually had cake, I think, this year. We did. Um, but, you know, it's like more casual because that's not a thing that I like. So I don't show up as the uh, – actually, my husband went out conforming to what people do in kids' birthday parties. So anybody who has kids, my husband's like, we need goodie bags. I'm like, no, that is literally ridiculous when your kid comes home with a goodie bag that costs more than the gift you bought the birthday person, right? Am I right or am I right? So I refused. But he went out and he bought these gift bags, and they were kind of weird, and he knew it after the fact. But – you know, so me being able to go, I don't do kid birthday parties. That's me having the courage to say like, you know, and of course I do the things for my kids, but you know, that's just me being able to go, you know what? I can't do it. I don't like it. <laughs> and everybody's okay. Everybody lives. We, ha we have a family birthday party all the time and that's what I value. And there's so many of us. There's always, Oh, that's really cool. Family birthday so, party. Yeah, we always do it. So, but you know, that's the authentic self is you want to be a plumber, be a plumber. Even if your family doesn't think you should be a plumber, you want to go to Mount Kilimanjaro, go. One of my coaching clients right now, he, he, I doubt he's on because he 
emailed me all these pictures from Rome because he wanted to travel alone. And everybody in his world has been telling him he can't travel alone. And so then I start coaching and he goes, I want to travel. I go, why don't you? He goes, everybody says I can't travel. I go, who cares what everybody says? And so right now he's in Rome and then he's going to Greece and then he's going to, I don't know, he listed all the places and he sent me a whole bunch of pictures. Super cool. Like, you know, and, and just having the courage to go do that thing. That's your authentic self. You want a motorcycle, get a motorcycle. You want a tattoo, get a tattoo, you know, do the things that search your mind and go, that's me. That's the real me. And then don't be afraid to show up as that person. And for another takeaway for today is look at yourself from the outside in and think about the times you show up as a different version of yourself than, than I can feel it in myself when I do it. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm so weird right now. Why am I acting this way? And it's because I'm trying or I've, you know, I've, I've defaulted back into this mode of feeling like I have to be a different version of myself. So I've got a question from uh, Scorpio Scorpio. I have ADHD, a fetish addiction and depression. Can I stay focused to quit without med meds? Yeah. And actually I used to tell people if you need to take some medication, then that's okay. You know, in crisis to get you through that first beginning, but after reading dopamine nation and I talked with Dr. Anna Lemke, the author, she's a psychiatrist in the book. She, writes she has a chart it's on page 50 because i talked to her about it it's not that i remember all the pages it's just i was making videos like you were really good <laughs> so don't don't email me <laughs> like what's on any other page because i have no idea but she on page 50 there's a chart and adderall which is an amphetamine produces 1000 percent more dopamine in your system so so if you decide to do that, it's pumping tons of dopamine into your system. So I guess like, you know, if you look at it as it's going to put all this dopamine into your system while you're coming out of the screen where you used to get dopamine. So it might make it a little easier for you, but it might be difficult then to leave that behind. And we know that's the case. She talks about that in the book where so many people are addicted to Adderall and the dopamine levels that it produces. And I never thought of it in that way. I always thought of it as a stimulant. So it's stimulating your nervous system, but it's also producing dopamine. So although it's more challenging, you know, going oh natural is the way to do that. And yeah, you might suffer a little bit. And going back to the question on withdrawal symptoms, you're going to feel worse before you feel better for most people because you're going to go through this dopamine detox and your dopamine levels are going to go low. And, you know, keeping your feet moving Forrest Gump style is the way to offset that. Keep moving force yourself to focus because you're, you're building the muscle of the brain. If you put the medicine in, you don't have the opportunity to do the, you know, the bicep curls of the brain that you need to. The work that has to be done. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of piggybacking on that, but um, purpose said, will nootropics, am I saying that right? New, new, new tra oh, nootropics. Nootropics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nootropics. yeah. Get me out of flat line. Uh, sure well, yeah, nootropics are, um, like supplements that are designed to support brain functioning. Now the problem with nootropics and again, like with anything is that they exist on a continuum. Most of them have caffeine. So like, again, it can be a support, but usually it's not something that you want to consume long-term. So to answer this more broadly so that everybody can kind of benefit from it, this is how I think about medication supplements versus, you know, going cold turkey au natural is that when you use medications, you're way over here. You're putting something into your system that shouldn't be in your system. So you're artificially supporting your system to do something that's not natural. It's not natural at all. So, you know, you only do that if you're in crisis. So I work with people, they're so depressed, they can't get off their couch. So do I want them to take medication? No, but do I want them off the couch? Yeah, so they can start moving forward. So there's definitely times where if you're just like, so you can't even move yourself forward at all, then there's a utility for medication. But, you know, if you're, if that's not your case, then try, try to go more in the middle. So in the middle would be supplements. So again, supplements in the middle is still, a bandwidth like this, you know, over here to over here. So some supplements have a lot of caffeine. 
Um, some supplements have actually, I was just looking up studies that some of the supplements have pharmaceuticals in them and they're not supposed to, there was an FDA kind of, uh, you know, investigation into that as, and in the nootropic field. So really reading the bottle and making sure you understand what you're putting into your system. And I've even done this in the past. I'm like, I remember this actually, I haven't done it anytime soon. Thank God. But I remember going, actually, I did it one time last week. I will tell you what it is. Cause it's not bad, but I, I remembered like going, Oh, this is cool. Nootropic. This is good for my brain. And then I couldn't function for two days because it had some wacky thing in it that I'm like, you know, I'm all off kilter. The thing I did last week is we drink something called calm. A lot of people are probably familiar and I'm still on track. I take I those, the it's in the middle. That are calm. Yeah. And I, I drink the liquid at night. So it's calcium and magnesium, which is good for muscle recovery. And it also helps to bring the system down. So I don't drink it every night, but especially if my brain's particularly squirrely or bouncing off the walls, I'll drink it like, you know, before I go to bed, I bought the, the sleep calm, which has five milligrams of melatonin in it. And melatonin is, this is perfect example of in the middle melatonin is a hormone that your body is supposed to make when it's time to fall asleep. Basically it's the opposite of cortisol. So when it's time to fall asleep and you turn your lights low, which I'm going to talk about that coming up in the challenge, you turn your lights low, it signals your brain to make more melatonin. But if you've had an anxious day or a stressful day or a really busy day, and now you're trying to get in bed and your brain's still up here in hyper arousal mode, taking a little melatonin can take the edge off, but in a natural way, it's putting in a supplement that your brain's not making enough of at the time. And I thought five milligrams of melatonin is very low in the past. I've taken like a little bit more than that. I never take a lot of anything. Thankfully I don't take anything, but I remember like I, my brain was just, you know, going. So I took melatonin, but the point is I didn't even take a full, it's like two teaspoons is five milligrams. I put the tiniest bit in and I immediately can feel, feel my brain being whacked out. And I don't like that. Like, I just thought it would like make me feel a little drowsier. It made me feel whacked out. And then the problem is you still feel whacked, whacked out in the morning. So like, yeah. because it throws your circadian rhythms off and we know this about sleep medication, if anybody out there takes sleep medication in that medication back here on this side, pharmaceutical medication, it, it whacks your system out and it's highly addictive. But so like supplements put in and just put in a little and see where you go. And that can help you because it's putting in what you're lacking, but you don't want to do that forever also. So then now over here is au natural where you're, you know, you're, you're figuring your situation out, which really helps you to increase your self-awareness because there's nothing in there confusing it. I will say that um, this is, you know, on t the topic of medication, when my mother was, was murdered, um, it was a very, you know, I, I had PTSD. Um, it was just a really traumatic thing for me. And I really got in a depressed state. Um, not long after that, my twin sister had passed away. She had cystic fibrosis. So, you know, both two really, you know, close family members um, passing away. I went to go see, obviously, um, a psychiatrist or a psych therapist, and they put me on a lot of medication. Um, it numbed me out. I couldn't feel things. It, you know, there was, it was very hard for me to, you know, smile. It was very hard, you know, things just didn't bother me. Um, you know, but whenever I started working with Dr. Lee, um, I took her 90 day program and did the trauma piece and, you know, did the work that, and I was able to leave all of that behind. And I can tell you that my life is so much better and feeling feelings. And, you know, even if they're bad feelings is a good thing because I'm able to process them. I'm, I've learned how to process them and get through them. And, um, you know, dealing with those traumatic things, um, it's only made me a stronger person. And, you know, I have to, this is not to, you know, promote, but, you know, I, it is because of Dr. Lee's program that I was able to actually learn how to yeah. deal with those. Um, it is a, an amazing, an amazing, thing. So um, we're going to change um, subject. Christian um, says, my question is, what makes pornography a more dangerous super normal stimulus than other super, super normal stimuli? Um, yeah. So what it is, is the levels of dopamine. So what happens is that because of the 
it's it's the levels of stimulation in your brain. We know that sex is a so in the in the book Dopamine Nation by Dr. Anna Lemke, we talked about this. She talks about sex giving your brain a hundred percent more dopamine than at baseline. And it was based on rat studies because I wanted to know where she got these numbers. It was based on rat studies. So of course you can't have rats watch porn. I, you know, get the, get the, get the image on that one, get the visual. Cause I did that <laughs> as I'm talking to her. I'm like, Hmm, that would be an interesting study with rats. But so, because I wanted to know what she thought the percentage more of dopamine was when someone consumed pornography. So even social media, And when you go on a dating app, if you're not, you know, if you're there just for a hit, those dopamine levels are higher. And so I contend, and I'd love this to be measured someday, you know, if Adderall's at a thousand percent more dopamine, pornography is definitely at more than that. Because I, and you can even read in the comments, and I've worked with a lot of people where they're like, you know, I've quit smoking, I've quit alcohol, I've quit this drug, that drug, this behavior, gambling. And they're like, porn's the hardest thing for me to quit. And it's because that super normal stimulus of the high levels of dopamine that are released. But the other reason is because people find pornography when they're young. So we'll just say 10 years old on average, right? So if you start consuming porn when you're 10, young brains are much more susceptible to these super, super normal stimuli, which is why our culture is moving in the wrong direction. And because your young brain that isn't developed yet is getting all of this stimulation from the dopamine. And if you just think about logically, there's not many 10 year olds who are, you know, addicted to alcohol or drugs, but that's the beginning of a pornography addiction or the beginning of consumption. So it really impacts the young brain and science supports that. So it fries out the reward center. There's studies that proves this, fries out the reward center. And so it escalates your behavior more quickly and you have to keep going back in more frequently, more consistently, and with more intensity. And when you do that, you're frying out not only the reward center, but the frontal lobe in your brain, which is what gives people the behavioral issues issues that they have or the challenges. Cognitive thinking, you can't think, brain fog, you're not able to focus. It gives you ADHD. Porn-induced ADHD is what I'm calling it, you know, ADHD symptoms. And it also makes it so that, uh, you know, someone put a comment, and I, I can't, uh, I don't know, I can't find the person's name, but about, you know, how do I last long in bed? You're not supposed to last that long. It's supposed to be in Rena Malik, the, our, our podcast is coming out. She's the urologist. You know, sex is supposed to take like 30 minutes on average. You're not supposed to last forever. And the orgasm part or lingering in that space is only supposed to be a couple of minutes long. And if you're going beyond that, then, you know, you're putting your brain in this, in this dangerous, super normal stimulus mode. Uh, James, do you have anything else? I'm reading through comments here. Yeah, I, am I, was a, tor- I am a Taurus. How'd you know that? <laughs> I'm a Taurus too. <laughs> you, you are? When's your birthday? Did I know that? April 26. Oh, I started the day April. after my birthday. So Right. I knew that. Yep. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because your your birthday was a Monday, and I'm like, it's your birthday. Start on Tuesday, right? Uh huh. Yes, yep. I remember. Uh, yep. Yes, I am a Taurus. You know what they say um, about Tauri. My kids are. I think I told you this that my one daughter in particular is totally into horoscopes, and uh, she. I was reading this definition of Tauri. My husband and I are both Tauri. Our birthdays are a week apart, and I'm like, you know, basically, it's like they go from zero to sixty. You know, kind of like a bull. And it's funny because my husband, he's very actually much less so now, but like he, you know, he'll destroy someone pretty quickly. (laughs) And I don't, I'm, I am so chill until I'm not. And I go, usually it has to do with my kids. I go from chill to mama bear in like, you know, less than a second. And the stories are embarrassing. I won't even share them with you (laughs) because they've happened a couple of times. But, you know, that's why my daughter's like, you you really hang in this chill space until you don't. And then watch out. <laughs> that's so true. I, I've, yeah. I've seen that. Um, <laughs> so um, somebody asked, what is PDA? And that it, public display of affection. Um, yeah, so I yeah. just wanted to mention that. Um, it's Casper says, what can I do to find a common group in real life? How can you fight loneliness during this time? Does online groups... Mm, there's online. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, 
you know, or in the world, honestly, I'd love you to find in-person groups, but you know, with COVID being so weird, it's difficult to do that. So, um, I actually just started watching this cheesy Netflix Christmas movie. I can't remember what it's called. It's a, uh, simple pleasure at those Christmas movies, but, um, in it, like, you know, they're texting back and forth and, you know, it made me think that, you know, my son's down right now playing video games with my other son, who's 15, playing video games with a whole bunch of his friends. And then of course, you know, they were here last night in real life, but they have the ability to play with each other online. So like, if you have the ability to join something online, especially in this weird time where it is so strange to go out, that's definitely better than nothing. And you want to be able to create both of them in the end, because we are moving into like, I'd never be able to be here without with all of you unless we were using technology, right? How cool. Like I, that's why when I was doing comments last night, I burst out laughing. I could not stop laughing with the one comment that I read. It is so funny. I can't say it here just for the <laughs> sake of not being triggery. I could not stop laughing. And I thought, I wrote to the person, I am dying of laughter right now. This is so funny. But I thought too about that. I'm like, how cool is this that I literally, I was walking around doing stuff an hour later, burst out laughing, thinking about it. You know, someone across the world made me laugh out loud 10 times last night. That's an amazing thing. So using technology to do that is, you know, really cool. Jamie and I hardly ever see each other in person. We meet every single day online. And I also thought that about um, us that I'm like, you know, you and I have developed a really cool relationship just mm -hmm. even though we're able to get together and, you know, so it's here. The technology is here for the taking. Use it for good, not evil. And then, you know, when the world spins again, or if you can now try to get out there and develop those relationships, because that's important too. Um, you know, really important, obviously. Super Gamer 55, thank you for the donation. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying, Sean, Pierre, thank you also. Um, can you elaborate more on video on monk mode? Does it involve giving up most internet use or entertainment? Those in jam. Does it, sorry, you froze. Did it, it does it involve what? Oh, does it involve giving up most internet use and or entertainment? Well, it depends. It gives up, it, it involves giving up anything triggering. So that is, is what you're developing this self-awareness during these 30 days. You know, you want to figure out what is triggering. So for most people, it involves getting off uh, social media and cleaning your social media up and then taking a 30 day fast is a good idea because, you know, I think social media is fun, but I know I said it here in this, in this live before, you know, in my Google, all the stuff that pops up is what pops up for you is what you search. They're feeding you back what you've been searching. And actually I thought it was really cute because my son was going through his like uh, you know, the widget that serves it up to you. And he was sitting next to me and I was thinking, Dear God, don't let anything crazy pop up, <laughs> you know, because he's my 17 year old son. But it was really cute. Like I and everything that popped up was right in line with everything that he cares about. So all the things that pop up in mine, they're always recipes or even Alexa. I was thinking that, too. I was looking for a uh, spinach and steak garlic bread recipe to make for my fam squad. And, you know, the next day, Alexa's got recipes for garlic bread popping up. That's the algorithm out there. So have the algorithm feed your soul, not drain your brain. You know, there's brain boosting and brain draining. When, when the algorithm serves me up recipes, that's great. When the algorithm serves me up things on personality types or on neuroscience or all the things I look up, that's great. So when you stop looking up triggering things, you can go back on social media because it's going to serve you your hobbies, your work, your relationships, it's going to serve you instead of take from you. So in the meantime, getting off of that, clean it up, get off for a while, unwire that brain pattern, and then get back in in a healthy way, in a healthy way. And uh, Farmer Bradley Powell, I just wanted to answer because he says that he has a disability and is on the autistic spectrum and has this addiction for, for four years and keeps relapsing. Can he ever pull away? Yes, you can pull away. Autistic spectrum disorders or anybody who is neurodiverse, which by the way is everybody, you know, these different brain patterns have different needs. So we know that auti autistic spectrum disorders, which I also specialize in, there it's communication between brain areas is what it involves. So the more things that you do to make it so that those brain areas communicate in a healthy way, 
the easier it is for you to come out of the screen. So well, everything that I say applies to you too. And then of course, we're all on a continuum. And I've talked about this before too. And like the whole alpha male thing, alpha, beta, sigma, we're all on a continuum. But when we think about our own game and making us the best version of ourselves without worrying what other people are doing, that's the authentic self piece. And that's how you win at this addiction piece too, is Farmer Bradley Powell is going to make himself the very best version of himself, which absolutely can be done. And then you won't need to go into the screen. And that goes for TikTok Hub, that goes for Rick Martin. That goes for sweet, super sunny D who keeps putting nice comments in, which I have to tell you from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate, you know, everybody here, David, everybody. So, you know, when we become the best versions of ourselves, that's how we win. So uh, TikTok, why are you guys live at nighttime? It is noon uh, here. We are Eastern Standard Time. So um, we obviously are, you know, talking to anybody and everybody across the world. So um, we do, you know, record these so so anybody can uh, attend. But it is noon. It is bright and sunny and beautiful mm -hmm. outside. So just want to and let the, you know. And this is, a, this is a time that serves most people. Yeah. We we didn't pick it. Um, we picked it intentionally because I know that it might be the middle of the night for some people in like, or getting tonight in India. Um, but, you know, over in the UK, it's a little bit later in the afternoon. On the West Coast, it's a little bit earlier. It's a uh, a pretty good time. For David, it's 11.53. He's an hour behind us. So for most people, Siberia, Russia. What time is it in Russia right now? Uh, okay, what else? Let's... So let's uh, Adria says, is it normal to feel lonely during NoFap? Yes, but yes, because what's the screen? The screen is a replacement for intimacy. Usually when people go into the screen, it's like a way that they're trying to find intimacy, but missing the mark. And so when you take that away, and the way that I've talked about it is, it's going to create holes. That's why one of the first things in our 30-day challenge was to find ways to fill that gap that it's going to leave. So that's the, the first job is to find ways to connect. And actually I plan on talking about this in the next couple, um, in the next two weeks in the 30 day challenge. And there's a bunch of it in the program that I have for December because connection is really important. So if you have people in your world, you know, that's why I was talking about last night, sitting on my back, back porch, just listening to my people is amazing. And I took my family to the movies. I put a picture of us on Instagram yesterday. I took the whole, I asked them all because now they're teenagers. I asked everybody to meet me at the movies and we saw James Bond, longest movie ever, but it was good. And I won't spoiler <laughs> alert. It was very long. My one daughter's like, it took him 12 minutes to climb up a ladder. I'm like, yes, it did. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the daughter that probably didn't really want to come anyways. And then the movie was forever long, but those are my people. So being with my people is really important for me to connect. But like talking about how, um, talking about how, you know, watching a movie, you can connect to the characters, but doing it in a healthy way, not in a sexual way. So like if you dig James Bond, then you go see the Bond movie and you, you feel like you're part of it. It's healthy escapism. Or, you know, if you, I was thinking about this, you know, I think I talked about Thanksgiving. One of my Thanksgiving's coming up. I love Thanksgiving. I watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade, as cheesy as it is. And my whole family watches it with me for three hours. I don't get off the couch, which is like unheard of for me. I've been doing it since I was a little kid. So it's a really cool tradition. So my connection to that tradition, I'm already looking forward to it. It doesn't even matter if it's good or bad. That's a connection for me. And then my, you know, my kids come and go and it's really cool connection. So finding the things that you connect with other human beings but it can be things you care about too. So, you know, that can be different for all. My son, Seamus says he's a quote unquote collector, which means his room's absolutely a mess, but he does collect like, <laughs> he has Star Wars dudes. He just ordered, oh, it was a Star Wars dude. He So like, he's connected to those things and he's in there like valuing it. And I love that because that's his authentic self. No other kid wants to connect, collect things and put them around their room. That's how you connect to the things that you care about. Work, people, hobbies. And if you do that, you won't be lonely. And I talked about this. Loneliness 
is the feeling of being alone. You can feel alone in a crowded room. Mm -hmm. You can feel connected by yourself on your back porch. It's the state that you're going for. Find the state of feeling connected to the world and you won't feel lonely. So I've had a couple of people ask this, so I'm not going to uh, single out one, but you know, how do you get rid of lustful thoughts or lust in general? Uh, very slowly and deliberately is, you know, if you have those thoughts, you, I made a video and I encourage you to watch it where I give you two strategies to be able to shift out of that lustful thought as it comes to you. Eye contacts, one of them by being able to see people as whole people. It's a total framework shift. And what I mean by framework shift, I thought about this. I, my friend Molly, she was over a couple of weeks ago. I forget what she was saying. And I said, we got to framework shift this because it was, you know, something negative that any negative things I try to framework shift into a positive thing. And she's like, what do you mean by that framework shift? And I thought that's pretty interesting because she doesn't know how to framework shift. Framework shifting is, you know, being able to look at something in a different light. You've looked at it in one way forever. So now look at it in a different way. So seeing people as whole people is one way. Eye contact. I, eyes are the window to the soul. So when you connect with people, and I was thinking about this too, because my kids have been home for two days. I was thinking how little we actually make eye contact. You know, we're sitting next to each other on the couch, even though I spent a lot of time with each kid. You know, how often do you actually like look into someone's eyes? Yeah. And doing that intentionally, when you look into someone's eyes, you connect with them at a different level. And we'll just leave it there. So the, the video is 10 ways to stop lusting. If you want to take a look at that, um, it is, is a great video. Um, do you use NLP strategies? Yeah, that's neuro linguistic programming. And, you know, I... I, I see that question. It's from Varuj A, if I'm saying that right. Um, and TikTok Hub, my husband was just calling me. Did you see me use my watch to go? Burp? I was going to say, speaking of people, he's trying to call me right now. <laughs> uh, he's trying to call me. Guess where he's going? If you had to take one guess where that man's going right now, anybody? <laughs> he's going golfing. Because <laughs> um, it is absolutely amazing out there. But um neurolinguistic programming can kind of be used for negative, depending upon, you know, who you follow it through. And it is about like changing the way that you program your brain using language. So some people will do that to manipulate other people, which clearly I'm not a fan of, but I'm definitely a fan of changing the language that you use. Um, you know, like my daughter who probably will kill me later if she ever sees this was having a freak out yesterday. And she was kept saying that she's having a panic attack. I'm like, you're not having a panic attack, babe. You're having a freak out. Let's not give it like, when we, when we give the language of panic attack, it, it, you know, and I know people out there are suffering from panic attacks, but you know, I'm like, let's just shift the language on that because it's easier to pull yourself out of a little freak out than it is to out of this big thing. Or when I talk to partners, partners will tell me that they're heartbroken, that their partner is addicted to porn. And I'm like, I know it feels like your heart is breaking, but that's big language around something that's solvable. So Let's say that you're sad or you're angry because a broken heart doesn't feel like it can be mended. Yeah, you're right, Scorpio, Scorpio, using neural ling linguistic programming for pickup artist type stuff. That's exactly what I'm thinking about. Or I'm actually thinking in sales too. You know, some people learn how to talk in a specific way to kind of mind control people. Obviously, I'm not a fan of pickup artist type stuff because that's just manipulating people. Um, okay, Jamie, got one more thought here or because um, then I'm going to have to wrap up because I have appointments here today for this beautiful Friday. So is, uh, yes, Naz says, is being attracted to someone in real life a healthy source of dopamine? Absolutely. And it's being attracted to one person at a time. Doesn't mean you have to be with that person for the rest of your life, you know, but what unfortunately what pornography does too is it conditions your brain to think that multiple partners is a good thing and i've gotten a few questions about this lately like is it okay to be with multiple people is that a happy relationship i happen to know the science on this it's called polyamory and i've talked about it here before is that usually one person wins in that and all the other people are pawns for that person's pleasure and that science shows that the people in that relationship they're not happy 
So when you're getting healthy dopamine from a whole person, not just their body parts, not just having sex with them, where you think about the weird things that they said and you laugh and you crack up about it, that means you're getting healthy dopamine from all the different types of intimacy. And I can never remember all of them off the top of my head with, while I'm talking, but you know, there's physical intimacy, which involves sexuality, but it also involves handholding, you know, touching someone, uh, in, can be really powerful, you know, just having hugs. We know hugs give our brain so much oxytocin, whether they're, you know, with a love interest or not, there's experiential intimacy, going, having cool experiences, spiritual, intellectual, all different types of intimacy. So when you think of that person and, you know, you think of their smile and you think of the silly things they say, and you think how they trip when they walk, that's full person, you know, dopamine, which is a cool thing to do. I know my husband will send me little texts, you know, I want to snuggle tonight, you know, and just sitting <laughs> on the couch and, and, you know, just, just those little things, but it, it's really nice to get those things throughout the day. Um, um, oh, totally. like, asked, even, even with my kids, it's like super fun. You know, they text me all day long from school. I'm like, dudes, you are at school. Stop <laughs> texting me. But then I thought, how cool is that, 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 you know, my kids are texting. I'm sure they're texting all their friends too, which is terrible, but you know, just so funny. My, my son's sending me pictures of some driving thing for the PlayStation that he wants for Christmas. And I text him back to, why are you Christmas shopping in first period? <laughs> and he's like, LOL, you know. Uh, uh, the black dude says, what does PMO mean? It's, it's porn, masturbation, and orgasm. Um, oh, so thank we, you, Cup Hill. I think we're, bl we're very blessed here too. Actually, my son was saying yesterday that he thinks the cool thing about me and my relationship is that I'm not afraid to do the difficult stuff, but that I don't drag everybody into a drama. <laughs> and because he, he said he's so cute, he's 17 and he's like got this budding relationship and his new girl that he wants to have, wants to be his girlfriend was over yesterday. She was very cute. And he's like, in the morning he goes, relationships are hard. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I'm like they are hard, but they're worth it. That's it. So what motivates it. me? TikTok hub. Lots of things motivate me, but mostly the, all the things that I talk to you all about, you know, I, I am glad to be here because I am a product of what I am talking about. I am so motivated by the journey. I'm less motivated by the outcomes. I'm more motivated by the journey and I'm motivated by the people in my life, including all of you. I know that sounds cheesy, but it's true. That's why I come here. And, you know, I'm motivated by impacting other people's lives. I think healing is the whole reason for the human condition. The difficulty of the human condition is to heal ourselves and to help other people heal themselves. Like I'm not here healing you, I'm here helping you heal yourself. So, and in yeah. doing so, I heal myself and it goes back and forth and we all become better. That is what motivates me. Absolutely, I completely agree with you. Um, so we're gonna you know, wrap up. I do want to um, just really um, talk about uh, we're really poised um, for Giving Tuesday, which is November 30th. Um, part of the 12 step program, the last step is to give and serve. So, part of our nonprofit um, set up at Porn Brain Prevention, we have a goal of raising $300,000 so we can stop the silent tsunami of porn. Together, we can heal one brain at a time. So, many families spend years seeking out help for mental health issues, ADHD, and behavioral issues with no benefit because porn is not part <laughs> of the conversation. So, it's time, you know, to make porn part. Part of the conversation and um, what these kids don't know that porn is highly addictive. So we've got a lot of statistics on our website, you know, that really show how uh, 90 percent of boys, 70 percent of girls the age of 13 and 14 have access porn at least once in the last year, plus 35 percent of boys at the age of 13 and 14 have uh, used porn um, and report that they can't, they've used it so many times they can't even count. So, yeah, you know, terrifying. we, we definitely um, have, have this huge goal to, to be able to um, raise a lot of money to be able to um, three things, uh, free educational content on the, on the website, social media and internet about the dangers of porn. Um, 
and free content, free digital educational programs um, that highlights, you know, healthy mood regulation and sexuality uh, to be proven in schools, churches, and youth organizations, and free support for young adults who are struggling with porn addiction. So um, you will see uh, a link at the bottom um, to the porn brain prevention um yeah, nonprofit. Our, our yep. nonprofit donation box is open to accept donations, which go directly into the nonprofit to create the digital program for teenagers. Upstream, I'm here trying to help you all break from the chains and the shackles of poor news. Then we have the power, and it's literally power to go upstream. You know, people are always saying to me, why don't you take on the porn industry? And I, I write back in the comments, I'm a lover, not a fighter. I'm here to love you all so that you love yourself and we can move past this. And I'm going to go upstream and teach teenagers to regulate their mood in a healthy way and develop healthy sexuality so they don't get sucked into the screen in the first place. That's what the nonprofit's designed for. And every single penny goes towards it. And I just want to say, Arcane Workshop, you are so funny. How did you know that that is literally the thing that was cracking me? <laughs> Arcane Workshop put it in the... Um, in the in the texts in the chat box which that is what was in my mind C control exactly so that was so funny it's going to crack me up all day long i'm sure of it okay so <laughs> what's going on this weekend jamie anything exciting what am i doing no we're we're going to be relaxing um i think we're going to actually start pulling out decorations not decorating yet but just getting them you know ready to yeah, start okay. because we always end up you know um very last minute starting the the week of december so then we have three weeks to have decorations up so we're, we're gonna start early this year and our um, house is so decorated for fall i have a ton of fall decorations like i like fall better than i like christmas and I, I, you know, I told you last week and I was just going to chill. I totally chilled. It was amazing. I just read, but our house is so cozy right now. I said to my husband, I'm like, it's just so cozy. All I want to do is like sit around. And I ended up doing a lot of that, but it's a gorgeous fall weekend here. So hopefully I'll get outside and do some, some fun things. And I haven't hung out with my friends in two weeks. So hopefully I'll get a little hang session going. Uh, let me see. I'm just seeing that there's a comment from Vab. Bab Have Coterie. I was trying uh, thank to thank you for thank you for that. your donation. I just wanted to acknowledge that. And uh, you know, brain fog. Yep. Suggestions is to uh 20 year old athlete, yep, and they align with the things I do. Yep, you have to uh well, you when you're having actual sexual relations with someone, um, maybe bring the intensity down because if you're going hard and intense, then you might be just flooding your brain with dopamine. Okay. I have to wrap up. Thank you for joining me. Everybody make a plan for this weekend. If you haven't started the 30 day challenge, there's lots of videos that you can watch lots of action steps that you can do. Get out in the world and connect with people or, um, you know, get on purpose and I will see you all next Friday. I'll see you then. Bye y'all. Bye Jim.